Good Good morning to you Hello. all and um, welcome again to our Do What You Love show. And this is the continu a continuation of us featuring our virtual assistants here in Outsourcing Angel so you get to know them better. And so um, last week we were able to interview Jamie. And so for today, we will be interviewing again one of our dynamic VAs that we have uh, in Outsourcing Angel. So she preferred uh, that people will call her Aya and she has been with Outsourcing Angel since 22nd of July 2015 where she first worked on a task basic for various OA clients and since then she has been a dedicated VA for full-time and part-time clients. She personal or she specialized in content creation, content marketing, copywriting, and editing for virus marketing platforms such as social media and email. She also specialized in website administration, funnel building, and customer relationship management. So outside of work, she's into gaming. And what makes it very exciting is that she involved her 10-year-old daughter <laughs> and her fiancé for the online gaming. And she's also fun of uh, reading manga and anime. So without much further ado, our dear viewers, let's all welcome Angelica Aya Arabe. Hi, Aya. Hi. Hi, Kirby. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and so we're very happy to have you with us for today's show. And Thank so you for having start, me. Well, definitely, we're, you're, you're very welcome. So let's start with getting to know you. So tell us a little about yourself from education, family, and if you have anything to share growing up and as well as your childhood goal. Okay, first off, um, I would definitely have to say that working online has, has never been part of my plans when I was growing up. I wanted to be a lawyer. So when I, um, when I enrolled at a university, uh, I took up accountancy as my pre-law course. But then uh, I gave birth at 19. So I had to stop studying to take care of my daughter. That's when I started to... Um, study up and read about online work because I'm um, surfing through Facebook I see um, uh, young moms like me who work online that's when I that's when I decided that I want to learn all I can all I can learn about online working but then my grandmother um, she wanted me to finish my course you know at least I uh, she wanted me to finish accountancy. <laughs> but so, yeah, I enrolled again you know, with the plans of graduating at least. But then, um, but then while I was studying, I was offered an online job to be an assistant to a um, Canadian professor. My job was to... Um, what was that? My very first job was to um, design and um, complete his um, English business communication um, textbook because he was an ESL professor in Japan. So that's where I started. From there, you know, I worked with other clients until I found Outsourcing Angel, where I wow. have been working for almost three years now. Wow, great. Well, you've mentioned that you've been a mother as, as early as your yes, 19. Yes, 19. Yeah, and, and how did you cope up with it? Was it, all, was it a big challenge for you being a, a, a mother at that very young age? Yes, age definitely. Yes. I've, ha you know, I've had disappointments after disappointments because I wanted to graduate. Right? Right. I, had, I had dreams. That, yeah, and you've mentioned that you'd like to be a lawyer, right? Yes. And so, being a mother at that age would definitely erase that dream of becoming a lawyer. True. Of yours. Yes. So 
you know, I had to downgrade my dreams to at least graduate to be an accountant, which mm-hmm. I haven't finished yet, mind you. But I think I'm one year short of graduating. So I'm between, you know, saving up for my daughter's tuition, paying for the bills, everything we need every day. I'm saving up little little by little to, you know, to afford a year's worth of tuition so I can graduate. Yeah, well, well, that, that's actually a, a pretty amazing goal as well. That uh, yeah. at least, although um, because of those circumstances that comes along your way, you yet you still was not able to lose hope and you still have that goal of at least achieving, you may not be an uh, an attorney oh, yes. or a lawyer, but at least you'll be an accountant someday. Yes, <laughs> that's the plan. And, and, and so you did mention that you started working with outsourcing angel 2015 but mm-hmm. what year have you start working online i think that was um if i'm not mistaken that's 2012 i started 2012 where i met my first client oh well then, so from mm-hmm. 2012 until now so that would give us at least uh 12 13 14 15, 15. at least six years yes Oh my. So can can you share to us um your experiences with like working as a VA uh if you feel free to share an experience you have working with a with a good client and a and a like a, a hard client and how you mm-hmm. cope up with them if you have can you share that to us? Okay. First off, we have to um take into consideration that since we're working online, we'll be working with clients from different countries, different cultures, you know. Um, of course, I've been with clients who are very nice, very generous. Even I've even had a client gift me with a laptop. And then another client um, who um, gave us an all-expense-paid trip to Malaysia and Singapore. Wow. So, yes. Aside from... Aside from um, you know, the nice clients. I'm not going to say they're bad, you know. Again, I, we have to consider that they have different culture. They have different um, ways on how to deal with problems. Um, maybe, how do I say this? Um, they're very, some, some are very strict, you know. When, when you make a mistake, they tend to get really angry at you. But again, maybe that's just me. You know, since I'm a Filipino, we're used to not being, you know, not being reprimanded very harshly, you mm-hmm. know. But but then I got used to it, you know. You just have to consider that maybe that's how they run their business or, you know, because as a VA and if you're with a client, you have to put yourself in their shoes, you have to think like your client. I mean, if you make mistakes after mistakes, that's time and money wasted. So I, I would blame them for, you know, reprimanding me harshly. <laughs> yeah. So having that said, how do, you, how do you work with your client and how do you make your client happy? Okay. Number one is um, communication. Number, you know, I've had clients who are very hard to communicate with, not in the sense that they're hard to talk to. It's just, it's hard to reach out to them. You know, you message them every day, you send them emails, but, you know, they rarely reply to you. So for clients like that, I tend to, you know, barrage them with, um, yeah, you know, I, beca- I become a nagger. <laughs> I barrage them with message after message to remind them what I need to do next, if this is correct, if I if um confirm if I understood your instructions, you know. I want to I want them to know that I am interested to be efficient and effective with um with all the tasks they delegate. Wow. So now um, also, let's go to the client side. So if, if mm-hmm. you are to advise a client working on a certain VA, what would be the advices that you're going to give to a client working on a VA? 
Okay. Number one would be again to communicate with your VA. You know, if you give um, tasks to your VA, it would be um, your VA would finish that faster if you gave her the complete instructions. You know, instead of just saying do this, do that. It it would be nice and it would make her task um, easier for her or him if you include the instructions or you know, for others, I think you should also introduce your business, what you do, mm-hmm. what your business stands for, what you, what are your visions, your mm-hmm. your business's mission or your goals. So if if in case you know um one of your one of the goals or the visions of your business aligns with that of your VA, maybe she has a skill or a talent she can contribute which you did not require from her or him um at the start maybe you know she could be of more value to your business right right well i i strongly agree with that the very first thing that needs to be um should i say established really is a mm-hmm. communication and not just communication but constant communication yes so it's like you're guiding the VA and then your VA constantly communicate to the, the client. So mm-hmm. communication is a two-way process. It's just yes. not that it's the other side that's just communicating while the other is not or the other way around. And also, it's also a good, a, a very good point that you've mentioned to really onboard the VA properly. Yes. So um like do an introduction to your VA, tell your VA about what your business is all about, your mission and vision, your goal. It might be uh, your three-month goal, six-month goal, or one-year goal. Uh, you have to be very open to your VA as to what you'd like your business to be in the future, where you are taking your, your business, so that your VA can then connect and relate with that. And eventually, your VA would also feel welcome into the group or into the business that the VA will not just feel that it's just he or she is just a VA, but a member of, of the team. So yes. it's always a teamwork. And so thank you very much for sharing that with us, um, Aya. Now, the last question I have for you is that, do you have any advice you'd like to share to those VAs that are just starting or maybe those VAs that are already working with their client that's, they're having a hard time communicating with their client. So what would be the best advice that you can give to them? Okay. For aspiring VAs and for those who are already VAs, I suggest that um, you always read, you know. Um, for example, right now, I always um, make it a point to subscribe to um, newsletters, blogs about marketing marketing and any other type of skill that I I can acquire to provide to provide more service to provide more value to my clients um, aside from that you have you always have to take the initiative don't wait for your client to require you to learn this or learn that in your free time just you know read read a bit or you know subscribe to um I think there are paid courses, right? Or mm-hmm. the free courses. You can subscribe to those. And then what else? For those who are already VAs who are having a hard time communicating with their clients, um, always find time to ask them how you can reach out to them. If they're not reachable through Skype, ask them if it's okay to communicate with them through emails or other forms of messenger. I know my my client. I actually asked my client how how I can communicate with him if he's not available through Skype. Or he he gave me his phone number. You know, he asked me to send him messages in case he doesn't reply to them. You know, just take the initiative to ask your client how you can reach out to him or her. Now you don't don't just wait around for your client to. You know, to reach out to you first. Well, that's that's, that's a very very nice advice that um, a VA and a client can take from this interview that I had with you. So, to to our dear viewers, 
uh, there you have it. Those are coming from Aya, her experiences, and um, how she does work online as a virtual assistant. And um, she also shared her own um, opinion, point of her own point of view as to how a, an ideal VA and client communication should be. And because the bottom line here is that we're we're making sure that the VA is an effective VA to the mm -hmm. client as well as the client is getting help that he or she needs from a VA. So that's why we always emphasize that it's always been a team. And it always starts with have start with having a constant communication guidance as well as on proper onboarding of tasks so that um, it will then run smoothly and then comes the process of you guys working. One thing that's very challenging when we're doing online work is that we don't see each other physically, right? So we're, we're, all, we're working virtually and the only way that we can talk or communicate is through the internet. So having this said, we have to establish that solid communication. So it's all up to you and your VA or even VA and your client as to how you'd like to establish a solid communication. You can set a specific tool or app that you can use for communicating. So we have a lot. <laughs> and few to mention would be Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, What's Skype. Up? Fiber. Yes. <laughs> Fiber, right. And so there you have it, guys. And so we'd like to thank you, Aya, for your time. And thank you, thank Kirby, you for, for sharing a lot of, yes, of course, it's a pleasure. I have a lot to say, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's always a pleasure of time. having you, right, in, in Outsourcing Angel. And so to our dear viewers, we thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And until thank the you. next, do what you love show and have a wonderful <laughs> day, everyone. And um, enjoy the Holy Week. Bye. Yes. Bye. Bye. Complicated when you do what you love, what you love.